Hi, my name is Kristen Barlow, and this session is called Bringing Your History to Life, Home Movies That Connect Generations. Advertising executive Fred Bernard coined the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words. If a picture truly conveys a thousand words, imagine how much can be shared with the video. Better yet, you don't have to imagine. Meet my daughter Ainsley. I could tell you all about her, but instead, I'm going to show you. This is going to be amazing. Ainsley is 18 years old. 20 years from now, I hope she is a mom with kids of her own. Those kids might only see Ainsley as the person who makes them practice the piano, go to bed, and eat their vegetables. This video clip will help them to know a part of their mom that they don't see every day. It'll also remind Ainsley of who she is. Back in elementary school, I learned that a good short story needs the following elements. Character, setting, plot development, point of view, and theme. Telling family stories is great, but they're even better with another useful concept I picked up in elementary school, show and tell. In a home movie, most of the important elements are naturally introduced for you, and you can add anything else that is needed. Let me show you. You don't know? Can you tell me? I don't know what happened. What happened to her foot, Kelly? Uh, and then we all stuck in that piece of wood, and then a case of pig. Did something drop on your foot? No, the flag did. The flag dropped on your foot? While well, that was the story of Acacia Stitches, it also tells another story, the story of Acacia and Natalia, which reminds our family that Acacia almost did not learn to talk. She had an awesome best friend and her older sister who took care of everything. Every family has special stories that connect loved ones together. By the time we are finished today, you will have all the tools that you need to get started telling your own stories through family video. The video footage in our collection is raw. It is the truth of that moment in time. The video is not perfect, but it does serve to capture and preserve a version of exactly how a story happened. When we take video, create stories, and share them with our family, we can change how we see ourselves. We can better our vision of who we were and who we have become. We can also help our children to do the same. I would like to share an example of how video has helped me to connect with a family member who is no longer here. My grandfather died fairly young. He was 64. I have no direct memories of him. Grandpa's untimely death was from health problems brought on by his traces. My grandmother wrote his life story, which provides a way for me to get to know my grandfather. It is her perspective, which included some understandable conflicts. I strongly believe his weaknesses are a part of his story, but they should not define his legacy. Another way I came to know my grandfather was by watching him. Putting together a family video has allowed me to see how my family interacted. This video offers me an intimate glimpse into who he was. I have learned to love him by seeing him for myself. As we observe how our past selves or others interact, express feelings, engage and act, we learn more about who we are and where we came from. Here are a few ideas. Maybe you do not have video of a loved one. How can you tell their story? I suggest making a narrative video by compiling photographs interspersed with music that was popular maybe during their era. 
Or another idea for their narrative is to record a family member reading something from your ancestor's life story. Or if you have it, they could read something that was actually written by your ancestor. This brings their own words to life. All of our family stories are completely unique. Find whatever it is that connects your family to one another and to past generations. It may be through shared hobbies, traditions, talents, or mishaps. Our stories do not need to be told in a chronological order. Whatever your story is, use it to connect your family together and show how much you have in common, even if you live decades apart. Looking forward, when taking video in the future, remember, you don't always have to take the video. Allow others to capture the moment. An obvious reason for this is that you should be in some of the footage. Don't forget, you are part of the story. A few years ago, my husband and I were tasked with organizing a family reunion. I wanted to put together a little highlight video of the week. I asked my nephew, Trevor, if he would grab some video of some of the kids floating the river. He went above and beyond without even knowing it. Got your camera crew out here. Family camp 2018. Got Gage. We just, we just doing the whole thing. We got Olivia and Acacia next, running into rocks and whatnot. Oh, there they go. Where are you going? Six. Good. That's some parkour we needed. Parkour. I did not expect Trevor's video to include narration and storytelling. This added so much to the final video. I have learned that handing the recorder over to other people is sometimes a really good idea. They almost always add to the story using their creativity and their personality. Over the years, I have often found unexpected video on my phone, courtesy of my children. These surprises always remind me. If we could all see the world through the eyes of a child, we would see the magic in everything. We have some really fun stories that I had not even thought of recording. One in particular is a home tour, courtesy of my five-year-old. It is so fun to hear and see how she described our home. If you have children with phones, gathering their video is a really good idea. Teens are making videos all the time. Preserve these moments. They are writing their story and they are doing family history without even knowing it. Author Karen Walren said, comparison kills creativity. There is room for you. Nobody can do it with your voice, with your experience, and with your insight. Remember, you are a storyteller. There is no one right way to do this. Also, do not tell yourself that as soon as you know how to make a movie, you will make one. That is totally unrealistic. The only way to learn is to just do it. In my opinion, my first videos are not that great. Thanks to trial and error, I have gotten better. I am tempted to go back and do them over again. I haven't and I probably won't because this is about the story, not about me. My kids don't notice that I am better at the details now. They just love the story. Before you get started, you are going to want to have a plan of how you are going to organize your video footage. I started with a folder on my computer called videos. As I have found or taken footage, I make a new folder inside the main folder and I label it for that year. If you have mastered digital organization, you are one of the few. I like to think of it as a work in progress. Start with the plan, then just work your plan. You do not need to have all of your footage, video footage organized before you start making videos. You can move files one at a time. I still have a lot of video to work on. Here's my 2004 folder. I store the video clips inside the year they were filmed, sorted by event. This helps to keep the video, video footage organized. If I've completed a video, I add the word done to the end of the title. If I have not completed the video, I type raw in the title. It is easy for me to know what I still need to work on and what is complete. You do not need to be a computer genius to put together great stories. Let's get into the how-tos. If you have a Mac, iPhone, or iPad, your device came with iMovie already installed. This is a great app. It is easy to use and has some really nice features. It is easy enough that I have even made a few videos from my phone. If your computer was purchased before 2017, it came with Windows Movie Maker. 
If your computer is newer, it comes with Windows new application called Video Editor. They each provide basic functions for video creation. They do not provide a lot of opportunities for customization, but are effective enough that I have not felt the need to redo any of the movies I have created using these options. There is not a shortage in free editing software that is available. Each of these op options offer more than the free options that come with a Windows computer. OpenShot and VSDC are great for beginners. The interface is easy, yet has some fun features. Shotcut is also perfect for beginners, but it is also nice if you are planning to add audio files to your movie. I have not used HitFilm Express, but I have only heard good things about it. It is especially nice if you are interested in getting through a little bit more of a learning curve because you will be rewarded with a little bit more of a professional look thanks to their visual effects. If you are looking to make movies on your mobile phone, then Magisto is a really great option and it can be downloaded on your iOS or your Android. Most recently, I have been using Animoto, which is a paid service. They do have a free option, but it does include their branding on your video. I currently have a yearly subscription, which breaks down to $22 per month. In the past, to save on cost, I prepared my video clips in Movie Maker, and once I have several videos ready to go, I pay for a one-month subscription to Animoto, where I can complete as many videos as I possibly can in one month. Animoto is great because you select a template or a theme, and their system will do the rest. Here is a demonstration of how Animoto works. First, just click that you want to create a movie, and then you can go through the different categories to select a template or a theme that you would like to use. This is one of my favorites called Grid. Now just select that you want to create the video. From here, you can go ahead and upload the photos or videos that you want to use. You can do them one at a time, or you can do a group of items all together. So I'm now uploading two videos and two photos. So while that is happening, I'm going to create a title and include the year for these videos. Save that. I'm going to go back in and click this yellow star. That tells the template that I want to have that um, screen held a little bit longer. Now I'm going to do a closing. And then I'm going to move things around to put them in the order that I want them to appear in my movie. Go back and tell it to hold that one a little longer. On photographs, you can add a caption. I'm not going to, but I am going to say I want the videos held a little longer, or sorry, the photos a little longer. Now with the video footage, I'm going to go ahead and select the portion that I actually want to show in the video. I'm going to turn the audio off on the video because I do not want it included in my final product. So I'm going to fix this one as well, turn off the audio, now I'm going to look at music. A pre-selected song has already been chosen that goes with the theme. I can use that or I can look through their video library for another song, or I can turn it to silence for no music or upload music of my own. I'm going to use what they have. So I'm going to click preview video and then we'll go ahead and produce the video. I will just add a title right here. And then over on video quality, I can go ahead and select 1080 to get a better quality so I can show on a TV. Click Finish, and the video will begin to finalize. Once it's finalized, I can click Download, and the video will be downloaded onto my computer. Let's take a peek at our final product. Let me introduce one other method for putting together a story that I have found to be easy, enjoyable, and free. I mentioned earlier if you are using a Mac, you have iMovie. I do not, but I do have an iPad and, a, and an iPhone, so I played around with it a little bit with the features that iMovie offers. If you have iMovie on a portable device and are looking for a fun and creative way to engage with your kids or grandkids, I recommend making a trailer using iMovie. It is perfect for creating a fun story that can be shared for years to come. Most likely your grandkids already know how this works, 
but I will give you a quick demonstration. First, open iMovie on your phone or iPad. The, fir the first image you see here will appear. Select the plus sign to start a new project. From there, you have the option to select to make a movie or a trailer. Select trailer. There are a number of trailer themes to choose from. In this example, I'm going to select the scary option. Once you select the theme, an outline will appear. You are able to click on the various details and make changes. For example, you can change the movie name, studio name, and so on. You can customize it to include the names of everyone that is participating in the trailer. Once you have the details filled in, select the storyboard. From here, the gray boxes let you know what footage is needed and how long it should be. You click the, the box, the gray box, and then select the video that has already been recorded on your phone. If it is longer than needed, iMovie will cut it to the proper length. Highlighted in blue, you see wording that can be changed to tell your story or it can be removed. It will show on the screen if it is kept. iMovie will automatically incorporate theme music for you. Once you've completed this screen, your movie is ready to view. Here is a short segment from a trailer my daughters made a few years ago. As you can guess, this project kept them video or kept them busy while I did my grocery shopping. What a great opportunity for them to work together. I like to remind them that if they can make movies together, they can do dishes together. As these girls get older and start families of their own, videos like this will be priceless. As you begin to create a story, remember, video builds bridges between our early memories and the memories that our children are creating right now. Make sure your story is complete. There is nothing more frustrating than finding a beautiful family photo, but not knowing when or where it was taken or who is even in the photo. A movie is just the same. While video will naturally tell most of the story, make sure that you fill in the gaps. Maybe use photos to complete the narrative. Add a title at the beginning that includes the location and date of the event. When it makes sense, use music to help create the mood or enhance the moment. At the end of the movie, give it closure. Maybe you end with a photo, a quote, or a poem, or just text that says, the end. One thing to keep in mind, according to YouTube's analytics, videos are most likely to get viewed when they are just four to six minutes long. Writer and artist Vera Nazarin said, the world is shaped by two things, stories told and the memories that they leave behind. Once you've spent the time digitizing, organizing, and ed editing your stories, you need to make them accessible to others. One of the best ways to preserve and share your videos is to post them on the internet. They should be easy to find and easy to view. The two most popular internet options are YouTube and Vimeo. YouTube is where I posted my videos when I only had a few, and I still think that this is a great way when you are just getting started. If you are concerned about privacy, you can upload your videos as unlisted. This keeps search engines from being able to catalog the video, meaning only the people you have given a link to can find the videos. I have about 20 or 30 videos from my husband's childhood on YouTube as unlisted. To share with family, I've created a sheet in Google Drive that includes the title and link for each video. When deciding between YouTube and Vimeo, you'll want to ask yourself a few questions. Who is your audience? Are you willing to pay a subscription fee? Are you concerned about maximum video capacity or user security? It is best to answer these questions for yourself and then do a side-by-side -side comparison of both platforms. While Vimeo is fee-based, they do allow users to upload a certain amount of video each week at no charge. Both platforms do their jobs. They make your movies accessible. When getting started, I recommend giving both a try and then deciding which one works best for you. I love everything about family history and genealogy work. I imagine if you're watching this class, you share some of those same feelings. At Roots Tech 2016, Steve Rockwood, CEO of Family Search, said, Our ancestors were real, living people. Getting to know them is the reason to do family history. He also continued on to say, Your family needs what you have. Psychologists have said, 
Children who have a strong sense of family heritage are much better off and much more resilient than those who don't. As you find, edit, and share your family videos, you will connect past generations to you and to your children. You will also connect yourself to your children and your children to one another. You will provide a sense of belonging, purpose, and peace that will be as unique as each story that you share. Thank you so much for joining me. Best wishes as you enjoy the blessings that come from building bridges to the past and bringing generations together.